All right, hello everybody. Welcome back. Carl again. Um, please excuse delay in this video. I've been so busy with the Christmas holiday and the new year. I just have not time to do this. So today is finally the day. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, this is the chip here, as you saw in the previous video. Today I'm going to boot it up. I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi. I'm going to connect to a uh, little Bluetooth keyboard here. And my uh, other plan is to try and get an LED just to blank so we can see some code. Now, I'm not quite sure what comes pre-installed, so I'm not sure if Python's on there or not. Hopefully it is so I can blink an LED. Uh, so anyhow, I'm going to get you set up. I have a TV here. Here's the setup. Here's the chip. This is a LiPo battery pack, which is going to here. Now, you can boot from the LiPo if you press and hold this power switch in the back. I'm not going to do that. I am going to run it off the uh, 5 volt cell phone charger. I have the RCA output, which runs to my RCA cables, which runs down to this TV. And then uh, this wire connects to my USB keyboard and USB mouse. I also have a charger doctor, so I can see what the current draw is on the chip. All right, so let me get you set up here on the screen, and we'll go ahead and turn the power on and boot the chip. Okay, so now that it's loaded, you can see this is the home screen here, and if you click on uh, the computer things, it gives you this whole list of icons. So we're, let's go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi here. So we'll click on the link button. You can see here's my Wi-Fi. Now I actually have dual band internet here, so I have 2.4 gigahertz and 5, and you can see it's not showing the 5 gigahertz. So I'm, ass I'm assuming that means that the chip does not have dual band capability. Nevertheless, I'll connect to my uh, squiggy Wi-Fi, and it's going to ask me for a passcode, and I'll go ahead and just put that in. If I hit the number lock button, uh, we'll hit connect. You can see in the top it's, it was thinking, and it now says connection established. Hopefully that's a little bit better shot. So we're going to just click don't show this message again. And we'll go up here and we'll go to web browser. Let's see which web browser it's using. Okay, so it's using the Ice Weasel. Okay, so one thing to note, if you just Google uh, chip computer uh, under Google, all you seem to get is, in fact, the Kickstarter page. The website is actually getchip.com. And there's a really, this is very well, uh, a very good website. It actually talks about a lot of different things on this website. So if we kind of just scroll down, you can get all about power up, how it works, um, 5 volt, 300 milliamp. How do I know it's on? Power from the wall. Talks about it has built-in uh, battery, uh, LiPo charging from a 3.7 volt, which is also what I have. Uh, and this connection, if you have uh, 5 volt from the wall and then a battery backup, it actually acts as an uninterrupted power supply. So if I disconnect the power, it'll run from the battery. So we'll just keep scrolling down. Talks about how to connect to Wi-Fi. Um, let's see, this is more network stuff, if you want to change. And then it talks about how to connect to Bluetooth. So that's what we're going to do next. Next, You can see we have my uh, Bluetooth keyboard here. And it talks about you just go to set new device and then follow the on-screen prompt. And you'll get a page. So we'll go ahead and minimize that. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get the Bluetooth connected. So the first thing I'll do is put my keyboard into pair mode. You turn it on and then you double press the pair button. That'll uh, cause the LED here to flash rapidly. That's how you know you're in pair mode. We'll go up to computer, uh, settings, and then go to Bluetooth adapters. 
and we'll just turn it on as temporary visible. We'll go down to back to settings and then go to Bluetooth manager. That'll cause this to come up. We're going to hit search and we're going to look for the keyboard. And here it is. So we'll click keyboard. Click setup. Uh, we'll use a random pass key to pair. We'll say next. So now I have to push this key in, which is nine. Eight four six three zero. We hit enter. Connect to a human interface device. Yes. Device added and connected successfully. And you can see the light has now stopped blinking rapidly. So we're finished. So we'll close this page. We'll close this page. We'll go back to the internet. And we'll go up here and here to search. And we'll just type in Google. If I can learn how to spell G O O G L E. So we'll close that. We don't care about that. And there it is. So here is, in fact, uh, it's using Yahoo as the default web browser, or as the default search engine here. And as you can see, here is the Google Home page. Okay, everybody, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to blink an LED. Uh, I must admit, I'm not a super good user yet of using Linux. Uh, I do have Linux installed on one of my old laptops, but I'm still not very proficient with it. I'm learning as I go. So a couple notes. Um, I did look online under the Git chip, and they're actually running a version of Debian Linux. It uses the Synaptic Package Manager, and it also uses the uh, app.git installer. So, as you can see here, Synaptic Package Manager, there's also a package updater. So, if we go into to, to root terminal, the password for the generic setup is chip. That'll run that. So, then we can use the app.git install. So, for example, we can do Chromium. Uh, and this, or, or oh, if I... There it is. So uh, I ran um, app git update. So we're going to update the repositories here. All right, so it's finally done. And you see, here was the last command I wrote. Uh, at the root directory, I ran sudo app git update. You can see it ran all the updates. So now let me see if, if it'll run. See if it'll let me install Arduino. And there it is. Do you want to continue? You press Y for yes. Uh, do remember it's on a Wi-Fi connection, so it has to download it from the Internet. So as soon as it's done loading, I'll bring it right back to you. All right, and it's just about finished here, uh, finished installing the uh, Arduino. Okay, so we finally finished installing our, the Arduino, and I thought, you know, I bet I know I can get a way to get an LED to blink. I'm pretty proficient in Arduino code, so I have an Arduino Uno with an LED attached, attached to pin number, uh, what is that, 10? And we'll just set that there, and we'll go ahead and plug this into the chip. And you can see now I have uh, power from our Arduino. So what we'll do is we'll exit the terminal program. And we'll go down to computer. And now you can see under development we have Arduino IDE. So we'll go ahead and let that load up. So we'll go up here to file and we'll go to sketch. Oh, examples. And let's just go to blank. 
normal blinking LED and we'll change the LED to 10 and we'll blink it for one second off one second let's see board set up as uno and not sure which serial point it is so we'll just try the first one and then click upload there it goes you can see the LEDs were blinking And if I put the uh, resistor in right, you'll see we get the LED blanking. Not very excited, I know. But let's try changing the speed on the blink rate. And we'll go ahead and press upload again. You can see you get status, and there is an LED blinking. So, not to let you down, I did blink an LED, just not the way everybody thought it was going to get blinked. All right, guys, anyhow, thanks again for watching. Sorry I couldn't get an LED blinking on the GPIO pens. I'll keep an eye out uh, on the GitChip website and see if they're not going to put an update out to that GPOI library for blinking LEDs. Uh, for the meantime, we'll just go ahead and log off, and we'll go ahead and power off our chip. Please hit the like button down below. Please leave a comment if it helped out. Somebody left me a comment the other day that said just thanks, and I really appreciated it. For most people who don't make videos, you have no clue about the time and effort that goes into making the video, the time and effort that goes into editing the video, and then the time and effort that goes to uploading the video. So I really do appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.